Hello and welcome to this episode of Point Counterpoint. We are here to discuss and deliberate as always issues of significant importance and concern that the people of Goa face. We are here today in the middle of yet another monsoon uh, which has completely submerged and literally destroyed uh, the gracious, magnificent little town of Panjim which was at some point of time or at one point of time considered as one of the uh, best little towns, uh, even better than some of the little cities in Europe. Panjim, of course, is a very pale shadow and literally a, a parody of what it once was. Uh, under the, under the so-called garb of the smart city project, Panjim looks as unsmart as ever. While we look at Panjim, at the same time, we need to focus on the other city on the southern part of Goa, Margao, the commercial capital, which is which also has problems of a different nature, though visibly they seem to be same. The whole uh, twin issues of traffic and con congestion, the huge problem of garbage and filth, uh, and the state of its water bodies, it is its heritage buildings, and so on and so forth, which has led to that grand old city of Margao. Uh, facing the same kind of problems and the fear and apprehension among many people is that if this could happen to Panjim with a thousand crore uh, development ticket if not more, uh, what will happen if uh, Margao faces the same fate of being called smart. So the issue here is that we, we have with us very eminent panelists who are uh, stakeholders, professionals, experts. Uh, whose views very often have been taken and they have been uh, not taken but heard but not really implemented and that is where the where the tragedy is because both Panjim and Margao uh, have a lot of uh, very well known intelligent uh, stakeholders, professionals who have continuously given suggestions to the civic bodies, to, uh, to others, to the government and to very expensive consultants also. Uh, who have come come in, given a lot of plans, taken crores and crores of money, but ultimately we have uh, drains which have uh, collapsed, we have deadlines which have elapsed, we have uh, roads that are not built for months and months, we have people dying, falling into craters created by faulty construction. And uh, the story is very long and endless and regrettably very sad. So uh, I will uh, uh, seize this uh, uh, th this monologue as it were and hand the discussion over to a very fine set of panelists who will delve into each of these issues uh, one by one. We have with us Patricia Pinto, the ex councillor of the CCP and uh, a very, uh, very uh, serious uh, city stakeholder. Next to him is uh, Zemari Miran, the senior well, we call him a senior activist, but he wears many hats, columnist, author, writer, retired banker, but somebody who uh, understands Goa and specifically his backyard of Margao, like very, very few others. Armin Ribet the Santan is an uh, architect again, uh, somebody who has uh, uh, been a part of many of the city's movements for change, has participated actively in many of these consult consultations that I referred to and uh, uh, we'll speak exactly what is wrong uh, with this city of uh, Panjim. And my extreme uh, uh, left is Nilesh Salkar, the former president of TEDI, who will uh, bring in his professional ex expertise into deliberating on, on many of these issues. Uh, Patricia, I have no further questions. I'll just ask you to quickly respond to the points that I've raised with only one fundamental question what is fundamentally wrong with the way Panjim is being planned or, whether, or how the smart city is being handled now? Okay, I actually would like to talk on three aspects mm. of uh, um, what has happened. Yeah. One is what happened, especially the last few days. Of course, everything has been reported in the papers and all, but what actually happened, mm. why it happened, why all this has happened and who is responsible for this happening. This is very important. Mm. Now, what happened? Mm. There are a lot of things happening all along. Take, hmm. for instance, smart city. 
terrible works. You know that even when they are digging something for sewage, they are damaging the stormwater drains and so on. Um, works that I mean you wouldn't expect uh, uh, to be done in Panjim so haphazardly. Hmm. And then we've had flooding all over in and around Panjim. Now when these works happen, the three persons died. You know it. Hmm. They fell into the trenches. Hmm. Any compensation paid to those families. The issue is people die. Who cares? Did the families get any compensation? I don't think so. I don't think anyone bothered or worried about it, except it came in the papers. When the flooding happened, you had cars damaged. I know that people said that their cars started, uh, you know, this malfunction indicators came on saying your car is uh, mm. having a problem mm. and scooters uh, got damaged and all of them have to take them for servicing. Mm. Who is going to pay for this? Mm. Who plans? Who works it out? Who suffers? Mm. Main thing is who is suffering in this whole thing? Mm. You have had water entering shops, water entering houses and you have got damaged goods. Who is going to compensate <coughs> these people? Mm. This is the problem and then the stagnation. This is something very important. Someone has complained about stagnation around that court building in the Mercedes yes, yes. fields mm, okay mm. there's stagnation there's going to be dengue there's going to be malaria there's going to be whatever and we who's responsible and in the end what do we get I just read recently that they're going to raise house tax mm. people are going to pay more mm. so what are the facilities that people are getting with all these consultants <coughs> and whatever you have mm. so this is exactly what happened mm. I can come to why it happened or maybe someone else speaks and then I'll come to sure. why yeah. it happened. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Zamari, you can talk about both Margao and Panjim, but you have enough knowledge of Panjim to, to speak of Panjim as well. If you can just look at what is the reason why such a detailed smart city plan with so much of money coming in, experts there, consultants there, why has it collapsed? And the point is, do you see a similar parallel happening in, happening in Margao also? Actually, I don't know what is happening in Panjim hmm. because, you know, I mean, if this city has to be properly developed hmm. and into a smart city, hmm. you know, things should have been properly planned. Hmm. What we see is that it was a total mess. Hmm. I came several times by car hmm. and you enter the road hmm. and you have to take a U-turn and come back hmm. because, you know, you can't proceed further. Hmm. So there are no signs given. So, you know, everything was bad planning. Hmm. And I can only hope hmm. that Margao, they don't try to have a smart city because I don't, after seeing what has happened in Panjim, we don't want the same thing to happen in Margao. And mind you, hmm. Margao has one or two entries only. Hmm. So you can't enter uh, Panjim, uh, in Panjim you can enter on various sides, you know, and you have many roads. Yes. In Margao you have only two main roads, you know, this Padre Miranda Road and Abad Faria Road. Mm. You see, these are the main entrances and, and exits, uh, exits mm. from, from Margao. Mm. So I only hope they don't have a smart city in Margao. Mm. Mm. Now, as far as development is concerned in Margao, mm. I don't see any. Mm. And I don't really know what they envisage for Margao. Mm. Because there's nothing happening, you know, except the roads are being tarred. Those also get washed off hmm. very fast. Hmm. Then uh, the drains are the same. Hmm. See, there are no new roads. Hmm. On the contrary, you will find that, uh, you know, some encroachments here and there. Recently, there was a, a, an attempt to, to remove some hand carts and all that in, in Fatorda. Hmm. But nothing is happening in Margao. Hmm. All the footpaths in front of the shops hmm. are full of this tarpaulin and all that. And the other day, I saw that under the new laws, which are criminal laws that have come, they have they have uh, fined uh, one fellow who 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 sells coconuts mm. and another yes. another person who sells tarpaulin. Mm. Now, why target these poor people? Mm. You see, who are trying to make a living? Mm. You know, if they really obstruct, I can understand. But there are so many things, other things that are obstructing, including the f uh, footpaths. People can't just walk into the footpaths in Margao. Everywhere, the footpaths are occupied and are occupied by people who have their shops, shops <coughs> are in front of the in front of the food parts. But Margao so at least we can pinpoint that there is one authority, the MMC that needs to be doing this, the local councillor should be made accountable, the MMC should be made accountable and the respective MLA should be made accountable. But the point here is that now 
when when that is very clear then why is the you know when the authority is defined why is the accountability accountability not not defined actually uh, the the main main problem in in margaon as mm. i see it mm. is that very few of these councillors mm. get elected to serve the city mm. Mm. everybody has their own interests mm. and you see they very few of them are mm. bothered about what is happening in their wards right today they say we don't have a place where to throw the shrubs that mm. have been removed from the mm. roadside mm. you know we don't have people throw uh, they cut uh, mm. coconut trees or the leaves and all that they don't have place mm. so they don't know where to throw it same thing happens with people trying to to repair their houses or their floors mm. see people are prepared to throw the debris somewhere mm. but then there is no no place which is assigned for for that Right. So they say we don't know where the place is, and wherever they try to go, hmm. they are immediately fined. Hmm. So they don't know what's to be done. So the councillors, except a few, there are a few, who are really interested in doing some work for the, for the ward. Hmm. They may have other interests also, right. some of them. Hmm. But most of them, uh, I mean, quite a good number of them, they take interest in their 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 wards. But still, things don't get done because you know it is PWD. Uh, eventually the municipality only deals with garbage right okay hmm. cleaning the 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 drains and that's all practically but even that is not being done properly. that is also not being done <laughs> properly <laughs> because hmm. garbage there hmm. was one problem hmm. at one time they had self help groups hmm. which were collecting the garbage hmm. and these people used to come to the houses and collect the garbage right now when they wouldn't come hmm. they knew that they wouldn't get the money hmm. right okay now that the municipality collects the they have they have done away with the self help groups nobody knows why now what is happening is that people who do not pay uh, trade licenses do not pay house tax their garbage is being collected and those who pay for example i had an office hmm. i never saw a garbage collector near my office hmm. right see right. Okay. so we who are paying they, we, we don't get uh, garbage collection collected okay Okay, I'll just come back to Margot. Uh, Armin Patricia, of course, narrated exactly the you know where the problem lies. Uh, I'd like you to get into the why of it. But before, I'll just flag two or three points. You may uh, factor that in, you know, in your response. See, as far as the smart city work is concerned, uh, the overall uh, budget for the entire thing would be thousand crores, fourteen hundred crores, whatever the case case may be. But out of which the major component was basically sewerage. Okay, I mean 500 crores, 531 mm. crores odd, and so on and so forth, uh, because that that was a major work for the for the city's improvement. Now, what we do know, and what what is being told to us, the feedback that we get is that this entire sewerage project that is being taken has been done without much thought into it, because when you start digging and uh, you know doing your sewerage works, apparently the age-old drainage plans during the Portuguese era. that that was not available with with people they did not look into those when they started digging they they broke other other drains and pipes and then there has been co this constant problem of different departments uh, doing different utility works and 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 they are not synchronized and so on and so forth and that is of course the the big elephant in the whole room which has led to the digging of roads and the spoiling of roads and the entire monsoon mess that has happened this is these are just one you know few uh, few points that are being being bandied about but of course you you are there you you are the expert you understand this <coughs> could you just respond to some of these uh, uh no, these regarding the sewerage work i have i've seen it myself because i right. live in panjam right and i've seen that how uh, one set of workers come they dig the road hmm. irrespective of whether they have cut the water pipe lines they have cut the electric lines or they have cut any of these hmm. uh, other hmm. essential services hmm. which which run through the city yeah and then you you start wondering what's happening next mm -hmm. then comes another set of uh, people who start doing their works mm -hmm. for the sewerage those those things that are cut are still left un mm -hmm. unattended mm -hmm. then comes the third team then comes the fourth team then comes right. the fifth team and at the end of the day mm -hmm. the last team which has come is already now damaged something which was somebody else had repaired so it mm -hmm. just keeps on going like this on mm -hmm. and on and mm -hmm. on and on Can you give some examples on some of the roads if, if you can So recall? this is uh, to give an example mm. uh, in Fontaines itself mm. you know where my sister in law has got a house mm. you know and uh, they had dug uh, the thing they dug for a sewage line mm. and uh, the the top of the sewage line was above the drain level 
of a storm water drain. Hmm. So, which means that the storm water drain now would be completely uh, in ineffective. In ineffective, yes. Yeah. Huh. So, then, then uh, they finished this, I brought it to their notice. Then they came, one or two uh, uh, engineers came there hmm. and they said, okay, they scratched their head and all. And then they didn't have a solution. Hmm. Hmm. And then the, the solution that they had was to divert the water at some other point. So, the, the load of the water on this Mm. Uh, the sink drain right. is is reduced. Mm. So, but it continues in this fashion. And mm. basically, this is well, if you ask me with respect to the smart city or anything for that matter, the whole problem is that there's absolutely no coordination between the departments. Each of the heads of these departments or the ministers in charge of this thing are, are absolutely not in talking terms with each other when it comes to their work. They hold it as though it's their kingdom. And yeah, this is a very important point because what we see is that, and anybody can interject anytime. I'm just yeah. saying, see, for instance, you have you have the CCP on one side, you have the Smart City on one side. Within the CCP, there seems there, there seem to be groups. The at the end of the day, the big question is who exactly is in charge in Panjim because everybody seems to be pass, passing the buck. Absolutely. Yeah. No, so I think yeah. I think now, as far as Smart City is concerned, I would like mm. to say something. Mm. Uh, as far as Smart City is concerned, it is a centrally sponsored scheme. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now. This scheme has come down to to the urban ministry. Hmm. So you have an urban minister, okay, and I think he should be responsible. I don't hear his voice, hmm. okay, in this whole thing. Then after that, you have all who come, hmm. the, um, the chief secretary and the committees that are formed. In the committee, you have uh, the MLA of Panjim, you have the mayor of Panjim, Correct. you have everybody in this. Mm -hmm. Then you have the chief executive officer. Right. Unfortunately, the first chief o executive officer, he, he was there supposed to be planning mm -hmm. and whatever. Mm -hmm. All he does is makes a mess for two, three years, withdraws a lot of money and disappears from the scene. My problem of accountability is how you all don't get this man. Mr. Chowdhury has disappeared, there's an FIR, there's everything, nobody can find him, that's under the carpet. Mm. Then you get a new CEO and a new CEO and this issue goes on like this. There's, abso there's no accountability, you rob and you go. Mm. Next one comes, may rob and go also, I don't know how it goes on. Then there's absolutely no planning, forget coordination between departments, that is why they pass on the buck, there's no planning at all. So. It's not that drainage plans are not available. Everybody knows where the drains are. CCP mm. has it. Everybody has it. Right. And put heads together, you can get the drainage plan. Sewage plans have to be superimposed and whatever. Let me give you an example. Mm. Last year, in the month of Jan, I heard some sound outside my house in Kampal. Mm. So I ran out to see what it was. There was this big machine digging the road. So I said, what are you doing? Mm. We're trying to locate the sewage chambers. Mm. I said, by digging the road, you're trying to locate where is your plan? Mm. So that was just a worker. What do I uh, uh, tell a worker? Mm. So I said, I want the one in charge here. Mm. So uh, oh, this one, that one. So I phoned the mayor. Mm. I said, I'm stopping the work. If we don't see the plan, we are not allowing them to work Big here. Yeah. Do what you want, he says. Mm. If I say, thank you very much. I phoned Smart City. Mm. So Smart City says, okay, we'll send the engineer of the sewage department. Mm. So in the meantime, stop the work. So And Kampal people are very united. All came on the road, they stopped mm. the work. Mm. Then after that, the next day, the engineer of the sewage department comes. Mm. And she brings a plan, a lady, she brings a plan and she shows me, this is an old sewage plan mm. that they had. Okay, they could have identified that you didn't have to dig to identify. Mm. Mm. And then I said, how uh, are you going to start the works? They said, yes. Mm. Have you made an overall plan? Where are our drains, underground electric, uh, electrical cables, uh, our water supply, everything is underground. Mm. And where is your line coming? Do you have a plan? No, we don't have. I said, if you want, we will come and we'll help you. We'll sit at the CCP or Smart City. No, it's okay. I can do it. Hmm. So we waited for the plans. No plans came. The third day, they take the machines, they go and they never came back again. And we said, thank God, hmm. we didn't have flooding in Kampal. Hmm. Because if they had done it without plans, it would have got flooded and this is what is happening in the entire city no plan not that they, there are no plans no hmm. one is making an effort to get the plans right unfortunately they've got consultants paying seven percent eight percent on the works okay a lot of consultants who are planning these roads hmm. now these consultants they planned they made a mess they did everything and now i believe the consultant has been discontinued so 
where is that money gone that has been paid to that consultant Correct. and mm. recently they've got a german company giz recently as of yesterday to do a survey of the underground drains which you have already damaged and finished mm. so what survey so mm. what is happening at smart city mm. and who is looking at this overall mm. is the is uh, mr vishwajit rane who is the urban minister checking on what is happening in the cities we also have an mp this is a central scheme we right. have an mp mr shripad naik Correct. has he ever inquired what is happening in the city ribandar mm. is happening mm. panjim is happening Correct. so what is going on there's mm. no accountability right from top how can you expect people at the bottom to do anything so this is all no, a I'll racket it's a racket ribandar also if you uh, mention ribandar yeah, yeah. ribandar also also ribandar was literally kind of blocked because sewage works were going on for almost a couple of yes, months people yes. could not even enter the houses because it, because it was done exactly and people were very angry and so on and so forth i uh, nish i'll just bring you into this topic you've been uh, uh, waiting patiently see the thing is uh, one straight question based on whatever we've discussed and whatever you have to add on to this is what is fundamentally faulty with panjim and marga both where are we going wrong in terms of planning what is what has actually happened is it a, it is it is clearly a man made disaster is not a not a natural disaster if it's a man made disaster who are the men women involved in 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 this uh, in this mess so basically uh, this whole thing stems from uh, from the three e's hmm. so for any planning project to be successful we got to consider the three first is the engineering or design mm. second is the enforce uh, the execution mm. and the third is the enforcement mm. so if your engineering and design is wrong the other two things will never fall in place mm. as i see it none of the government departments mm. have the expertise to come in with any sort of a plan mm. they are just not in tune with modern planning instruments they do not know what uh, what uh, what are the principles of plan exactly yeah. even the even yeah. the yeah. method of selecting consultants is wrong hmm. uh, normally you would have three consultant one is the architectural consultant the second is the engineering consultant and the third is the project management guys okay okay uh, there should be three separate contracts so hmm. then there are th checks and balances in place hmm. what is happening in goa is they are engaging the project manager they are offering all the works to the project management guys hmm. who in turn then engages the architects and the engineers who are his uh, who are his handmaidens yes so there is no checks and whatever the pmc guy decides is is being executed hmm. there is absolutely no semblance of planning nobody bothers to check about levels nobody you just take the case of a road and the curb stone along the road hmm. you measure a 100 meter distance you will find six different levels on the curbs hmm. they have to be equal all along the way hmm. so these are basically problems of execution hmm. So, okay. So okay. Th that okay. is the whole so thing. We do just the departments just are engaged only in licensing, and there is absolutely no engineering, no enforcement. Uh. No, but then with then the issue here is that who ultimately fixes it? See, we are laying laying down problems that some of us know, some of us some of us may not know. But the point here is then there somebody has to be accountable because you have thousands and thousands of crores literally going down the drain. No, when there is no like there happens, is no see? single agency which supervises these works. No, right. So you have uh, you have SUDA, you have GSIDC, you have the Smart City, you have the municipality. Everybody is the is in his own domain. Nobody hmm. knows. We should have had one agency which supervises all this. And unless that agency certifies the works, work shouldn't go ahead. Correct. Uh, I mean, coming to you, the, it just says, "See, uh, I'll just uh, go through some of the deadlines that uh, that were being bandied." See, one was this famous 31st May deadline, okay, hmm. of the sewerage works to be completed. Now, it was very clearly told even to the court. There are, there are. In fact, we had an unprecedented situation where high court judges came visiting to 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 check the city. And a deadline of where uh, 31st May was was given. for whatever whatever reason that deadline came and went there was some patchwork promises being done so to make make it seem as if the, that the deadline is getting fulfilled post that 31st may has gone we have, we are now in the in the second week of july right now now the point is when these deadlines get flouted and these are court given deadlines shouldn't they be an absolute accountability even even with with, with regard to regard to contempt and and the point is when this is not happening what i mean how do you address it when deadlines sacrosanct deadlines are flouted with impunity 
So I, I think what you're saying is absolutely right. You know, yeah. uh, if a deadline is given to the court, then there, there should be an action that follows yes. uh, not meeting the deadline. Right. All right. right. But also, I see a practical issue because hmm. you see the 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 work that was carried out in the first place. Hmm. You right. know, which which uh, brought us to this point right. was very shoddy. Right. You, to give you a simple example is that in my neighborhood itself, hmm. you know, we saw uh, the workers digging up between two chambers, hmm. Hmm. the inspection chambers, hmm. and it looked like they were trying to do some connection between those two. Hmm. They even d dug and cut out a, 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 the old stormwater underground drain. Hmm. Yeah, and then. Suddenly, we, the, the next I see is that they have covered everything up and they are passed. So, I made an inquiry to find out what's happened. Right. It turned out that they had got their invert levels completely wrong, which means that the, mm. the, the, the sewage that had to f be flowing through mm. natural gravity mm. would not be able to connect to this one because it was much higher. Right. Yeah. Mm. So, now you see an officer like Sanjit, who I consider is normally brought into these kind of of situations to sort things out because after they have messed up everything, that's the time they bring Sanjit. Hmm. You know, they they bring Sanjit over there. Sanjit comes over there expecting that he'll be able to deliver. But you see the kind of the the work that he has to deal with when he finds that everything is wrong. Hmm. The basic fundamental structure of whatever had to be done is done thoughtlessly. There's no like how Patricia says there are no plans, there are no maps, nothing to refer to. There's no uh, no line of action, which means that you know for for example. The, you would go to one street, mm. that street by the time you, you have parked your car and you come back to get your car and go back, mm. they have already blocked it on both the sides and mm. you, you have to maneuver between everything. This was happening every day to us right. for the last three years mm. and this kept on going on and on. But leaving that aside, mm. you know, what I think has been the problem is the PWD has been completely incompetent in whatever they have done. Mm. They've got some three or four or five or six mm. work divisions. Mm. Each work division doesn't know what the other work division is going to do and what, what they are not going to no, do. No, also, is the, who is the PWD reporting to in Panjim? The Smart City Authority? Who so are they reporting to? They are reporting to the Smart City Authority. Yes. I think that they have, in turn, probably mm. appointed contractors on, mm. on uh, this thing, mm. uh, you know, on through tenders. Mm. Yeah. But there's, there's not an officer of the PWD who has an overall charge. Mm. It's only these executive engineers of Also, there of is no continuity. You know, the, mm. the officers keep changing so many times mm. that the, and there are no records like in case of a meeting mm. or a plan. Mm. You, nobody has a master plan to show, mm. okay, this is what the final thing is going to look like. Right. Ideally, they should have had a master plan, they should have discussed it with the local communities, mm. taken suggestions, incorporated and then started executing the works. But right. I don't know why this government somehow seems to be shrouded in secrecy over public plans. Mm. They, never issue, they never show any uh, plans to the people. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Zamari, I've got a, a different, no, not a different take, but I want to bring in a different dimension to this whole thing. See, at the end of the day, these are all public projects. There's taxpayers' money involved somewhere, whether it's coming from central funds or the other. You have elected representatives in both uh, Taligao and Panjim and, and even in Margo, as the case may be. These are people who seek votes from the people ostensibly for the development of the, of the city. All these projects, whether you pass the buck or not, but at the end of the day on the smart city board or whether you talk of the CCP and others, you have the same set of people who are either ex-official members or were, who are a part of that planning anyway. The point here is that, do you think that all these people get away with it primarily because the people do not take these kind of failures as a very big election handle and a voting handle and vote on, you know, basis, on the basis of a delivery and a failure to deliver when promises have been made. And and you can talk about both cities. No, actually what is happening is that mm. they come for votes, no doubt. Yes. But once they come for votes, mm. then the people are forgotten. Mm. And the people also forget that they have to find them accountable mm. for whatever they are doing or they are not doing. Right. See, that is not happening. Mm. That's why all the problems. Mm. Today, if you phone a counselor, he says, you know, we will get this done in so many days and it's never done hmm. because he also belongs to the different group and because he dif uh, belongs to an opposition group you know the the the, the ruling group does not cooperate with hmm. him so he says see this is my problem hmm. so everywhere this is the problem and even otherwise we find that you know i mean 
whenever people change parties or is they call it for development mm. now one thing i cannot understand the development is from the funds from the public mm. so how can you discriminate i can mm. understand that an mla if he belongs to the ruling party or he becomes a minister he he takes more interest in his constituency right okay right. Mm. that that happens with mm. everyone mm. it's human nature also mm. you see but then that you neglect out together that's how mm. margaon for example mm. has been neglected for many years because you know the opposition is to be elected uh, the 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 mla mm. because of that you know margaon was completely uh, left aside and mm. uh, you know no development took place mm. now if you see margaon you mm. are talking about heritage mm. ha houses mm. now there are many heritage houses mm. Mm. but who supports them to maintain those houses some people are abroad some people have no means to maintain those houses right so how are they going to maintain those houses some of those houses are collapsing now take the the municipality the old municipality mm. of margaon which mm. is in the old market mm. now that that particular municipality belongs now to a private party so unless the municipality takes over and buys that property you know i mean nobody is going to maintain that mm. right see so this is this is the problem that the government should also look into when mm. they want to maintain the heritage but there doesn't seem to be any interest in meeting the the heritage and yeah, it's a budgetary problem also because most mm. of the times you go to any authority and they will tell you that we don't have a budget for maintenance mm. now it is incumbent upon the political players mm. to see that those provisions are made in the budgets if there is no provision then you how there are no provisions for maintenance no somebody has projects? to propose those provisions no right, see right. budget they don't see just as you propose a new project you got to say okay i have got so many buildings we need maintenance please provide funds for those mm. if those funds are not provided they can't do anything so mm. it is some for somebody who is in power and in that uh, setup but then these matters must be raised in the assembly and other forums exactly. to bring this exactly. no but exactly. even if there are budgetary yeah. provisions you know each one will be pulling on his side you mm. see because no, that's, you know that's fine anything, see that's you know, part of a political process yeah. but at least somebody should get up and say okay i have got this building this needs so much for that this is the estimate this is how it is to be done mm. and then you say okay this, just the way you plan a new project you also have to plan for maintenance correct uh pritish i'll like to raise this whole issue of see stakeholder engagement and uh, and its uh, effectiveness at all see whenever these projects are done i remember when the smart city project had happened there were so many of these stakeholder engagements and there were there were meetings in menezes braganza and other places where all of you all gave suggestions and other things now do you do you think or do you agree that these are all exercises in futility because all these suggest very meaningful suggestions are are supposedly taken on board but very little of it actually sees the day number one number two during the entire execution uh, process of, of smart city there needs to be a periodic uh, feedback exercise where a conversation is conducted with the same stakeholders who you consulted before and you you bring you bring them on the table take the necessary feedback and then kind of implement it now it almost seems that after your initial conversations with them all of y'all the whole thing seems to have taken a taken a life of its own without without y'all having any control over the entire thing now of course the people who are elected and people who are professional need to need to be doing this but we know we're doing it for the city and there's a complete collapse don't you think there has to be a proper kind of uh, feedback what has been your experience in in this see in all planning yes every sort of planning there has to be public participation yes. it's public who know what affects them right unfortunately uh this isn't there whether it is planning mm -hmm. at village level or planning for a project or planning in a smart city this isn't there it's all the attitude that mm. we know what is best for y'all mm. you know it's like um, and and i think this starts right from the top mm. um basically the government has failed if you ask me the government has failed because if something fails on top everything fails below mm. you know mm. so when you do not it's like uh, you know maharaja mentality mm. Mm. i know what is best i will do i don't have to listen to y'all i am the king y'all are the subjects so this has become like you know just a power game nobody is really interested in what is happening to anybody out on the streets mm. for example now many um, suggestions were given of course there definitely no feedback nobody is really into it's the attitude mm. the attitude is that they don't even engage people anymore mm. you ask for meetings you're not even called for meetings because so the reason for that is you. aggressive activism 
It's okay. See, it's, the it, why moment you take aggressive an aggressive activism is aggressive well. activism, uh, I, I understand your point. Exactly. But the uh, response, the way the government is responding is because there is aggressive activism. But but uh, why is there aggressive activism? Yeah. My, my, my when you is, don't yeah. listen, okay. when you see, have so many things that, you, that's so many things that could have okay. gone smoothly, but have be, have to be stopped because of activism. No. And then okay, the government doesn't really want to engage in you because there is so much other things at stake. You raised an important point. Please speak up. Then we can have a problem. No, no, See, is the issue here is this is a, this is a point that you flag. Now the question is, you mentioned. No, for example, let's take. But the case complete, I'll, 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 I'll give you the yeah, floor yeah. after that. We can do it. See, aggressive activism is an interesting phrase. Yeah. Now the point is, now aggressive activism doesn't happen out of its own accord. Number one. No, no, no it happens out of so many the other, other issues. When aggressive activism is happening. I just wanted you want you to respond to why is aggressive activism happening and is it a bad thing? No, the aggressive activism doesn't come up with suggestions. No, it yeah. the, what does the aggressive activist say? Don't do this. Stop work. Hmm. So, moment that is the attitude. What does the government do? He doesn't talk to you. Okay. How do you like to uh, take the same argument that you that you made? And incorporate that into the into what is happening happening in smart city in in the in the smart, no, no, smart city, city is a complete uh, mess up. I fully correct. agree with you mm. on smart mm. city. Mm. Uh, we are beyond the state of aggressive activism. Exactly, in, correct. Exactly, but there are so many other projects. Mm. For example, let us take why is uh, let's take the case of Panjim uh, bus stand mm. where there was some filling done. Some activists went over there, uh, got a stay over the filling. Uh, the project was not able. But activists are also people. Uh, same are stakeholders thing. of the same I, thing I, happened I with like the. Yeah. the same now, now, since you brought up Pato, yeah. you're talking uh -huh. about the bus I'm stand. You're talking about Pato. Yes. yes, and I would like to bring this up because hmm. Pato was most affected this monsoon. Yeah. Even exactly. the town and country planning office was underwater. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now Pato was a marshy area. You know, it was marshy. Madam, whole Wait, of wait. Panjim was reclaimed. Whole know, of Vasco was reclaimed. Let's, let's take. Let's so, take. Don't don't consider that reclaiming anything is bad. It Most is. of the cities in the world have been reclaimed. Exactly. Vasco, exactly. Vasco, his father was his father was the uh, municipal engineer in Vasco. Mm. Vasco has been reclaimed for at least 150 meters into the sea. I'm not saying don't. Pan whole of Panjim has been reclaimed. I'm not whole of Mumbai is reclaimed. Okay, okay, let, let, so let uh, let let the moment you stop objecting, listen. To I'm not point. saying don't reclaim. Hmm. You, if you have to. Uh, where cities have to grow you have to reclaim exactly i'm not saying don't reclaim but when you reclaim cities you must plan you know that those marshy areas were taking care of the tidal waters now you're filling it fine so are there canals for the water to go or you're just building filling building, no, building, no, no, I'll, I'll building. Interrupt, all right. yes <laughs> then Benjamin. again when the buildings come up you don't take care of no, but sewage. if your suggestions at that point would have been please show us the canals please show us the drainages please show us this before you proceed with the work the, the reaction would have been different you say stop work the moment you say stop work, no but Dilesh, all, no, no, all Dilesh, along, you don't all, understand all, all along at least i'm aware of the fact of that, course, that the demand for these plans has been made all along all along oh, and point. when you are stubborn and you start the work you say okay you're started now what to do or you have to say stop work Hmm. You tell me, once you have started the work, you do not listen, you write a letter. In fact, you will be surprised that you must be knowing about, I don't want to talk too much about it because it's in the NGT, that bridge and walkway that has been built in um, uh, along the Mandavi River. Yeah. You are aware of that. Now, before the thing, when it just started, we wrote a letter to GCZMA that you have given permission, but there is an NGT order until the... Uh, uh, the um, uh, what you call those maps crz maps yeah, CZ, yeah. CZ, 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 mp CZ. is finalized you cannot give permission but you decide to give permission and you start the work now they gave permission so we complained on 5th of jan 23 then after that they continued the work they didn't bother about our complaint continue the work we've gone to ngt and had whatever follow up till that time and i get a letter from the GCZMA that the inspection is tomorrow of our complaint on 5th of Jan 23, the inspection is tomorrow of a walkway that has been completed. Now what do you say to this? Start the work, but stop also, the work or do what? But also Nilesh, hmm. 
since you said that they go to the court and they bring a stay and things you like that, to. all right. You go to the the court and what do you do? You ask them, okay, show me where's your uh, this thing, where's your uh, drains, where are your uh, nallas, where are your this thing? Show me all these things and then proceed with the work. The problem is that the government is not able to come up with an. Uh, 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 I, I am fully on tune with that as yes. well. It's not government able. So it's not able to come up with. It's with not a past time. Let me let me also work. look at another thing. Also also yeah. you know we are only concentrating on things like a smart city hmm. but you know integrated in all these kind of things is also the plan which is the outline development plan hmm. and things like that Correct. all right now the government starts very randomly start uh, giving fr of spc spr very important point know, i wanted to look at also look at the kind of True. of uh, loading that it hmm. creates on hmm. its infrastructure hmm. who's planning for that nobody is thinking that's about correct. it Correct. the pda says the planning and development authority says oh, okay that's not my problem hmm. all right the municipality says oh you go to the smart city they've got a plan in place you ask the municipality, but what have you all been doing? Oh, no, no, no. This particular ODP has got portions of the village also included. We have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. The PWD says, no, nobody's been talking to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to add to that. Yeah, Listen, before yeah. I forget my yeah, point, yeah, and then, I'll go <laughs> then you go to the LH, okay. Yeah. I want to bring out the amendment made to the town. Maybe you'll be able to reply to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the amendment made to the Town and Country Planning Act under Section 39A. Mm -hmm. Now, this affects regional plan as well as the outline development plans that is ODP. Mm. Now the town and country planning department of course with the minister giving instructions I have to say minister because all this is being done by mm. the powers there mm. give instructions that zone changes can be made and once the zone changes are made people cannot object. What is the meaning of this? Why has that word objection been removed? So what are we spectators? So you make a zone change, objection word is removed. Only you suggest, but you cannot object. What's the meaning of this? All throughout town planning has had objections and suggestions. No, I have a slightly different viewpoint on this 39A. Mm. In principle, I think that it's a very, very good uh, law because Why? I know of so many places where things have been wrongly interpreted, uh, good families have lost their properties. Uh, so this is one part of it. What I am uh, objecting or what I am apprehensive about is the execution of this uh, execution of this act. Uh, it was when I was the president, we had made suggestions that you please come out with a set of guidelines which are public. Mm. Say one, two, three, four, five, six. If out of the six boxes, you can tick five. Okay, you get your thing. Mm. Even if there are four, you don't do it. Mm. And uh, it would have created a very transparent way of handling this. Which you feel is not happening. Which, is, which I feel is not happening. But mm. in principle, I am fully in support of this law. I am not in favor of the way it has been executed. Okay. I'm not in favor of the law also because you no. have 17 to 39A everything and as the minister said for small, small changes, 39A is replacing that. No, no, no the that excuse is, is no. small, no. small changes, people who've lost this, I understand, but these are not small, small changes. This is 2 lakh square meters, 4 lakh square meters. That is what, exactly I, said, no? then, that is exactly no, what so, I told so you. I, this is brought to do that and you cannot object, okay? So this is not right. Okay. Uh, uh, See, the thing is, uh, Armin uh, flagged some very important issues. See, we see, this is with regard to the overall planning of the city. You do not know who is actually in charge of charge of planning. Your ODP gets tampered with and, 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 and gets uh, changed. You do not have a regional plan to actually base itself. So, how do planners like you, city planners like you and architects work? In the sense that when 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 the when the planning seems to be so no, no, that, uh, actually and, you not, the, uh, and you do not know which plan to rely on or so you have you, another plan to If you refer to, to the back Town back and Country Planning Act, yeah. there are uh, it, it is uh, six or seven actions are mandated under this act. Right. Licensing and permissions is probably the sixth or the seventh in that thing. Right. The department has conveniently forgotten the first five or six, which, and, are? which is and concentrating only on the issue of permissions. Right. Again, I said this earlier also. The hmm. departments just lack the expertise to carry out any exercise like this. You no, but I, I, I want to say another thing, uh, mm. Nilesh. Even if there's expertise, and even if they are capable officers over there, they put aside and, and the corruption that, that is in these departments, they, they stand out and, and that's what you are seeing today, you and I. And that's the reason why you have this, this kind of activism that you're having, which is not uh, seen in any part of the country the way it is seen here in, in Goa. Mm. You know, everything that you see that the government is doing, is doing to meet the, their, their private uh, interests and the, the, the interests of, of uh, lobbies which are there. 
you know mm -hmm. and today under this current uh, minister of town planning we have got the worst situation not only is he doing this to our, our plans and things like that he's gone and even if you see if you're telling me that the smart city comes under the, the urban, urban. Uh, the yes. things, he could have very well integrated all these things and, and found a solution mm -hmm. to all this yes. mm -hmm. The money, you know, no, I was talking about yeah, activism sure. when he said, hmm. Hmm. if the stakeholders are consulted, you know, perhaps this aggressive activism would not have been there. Hmm. See, they don't consult the stakeholders at all. And then, uh, you know, people have to object when, when the government takes its own decisions. That's the reason why. Yeah, a little bit um, on, on Margao, since we've spoken so much yeah. about Penguin, just bring the focus no, I back. I think we should also include Vasco. In yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and, you, and you can talk about Vasco <laughs> as well. Why leave Vasco? Yeah, yeah, then we, we have Mapsa as well, <laughs> <and> then Ponda. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll kind of one more round, but yeah, we'll, we'll bring in Vasco also. Yeah. See, the money, see, as far as uh, Margao is concerned, one is, of course, the whole issue of garbage which we've still not been able to sort out and we've been, we've been doing it for years, thinking yes. about it for years. Segregation is still not a, not a reality uh, in its truest sense right now. Then you have open gutters and sewage right in front of the collected, you see, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. and, and op open, open gutter uh, flowing. Uh, the, the traffic situation has not been completely controlled right now. Uh, so uh, that is that is yet yet another mess. So the idea here is that in spite of uh, so many kind of minds working together, what is fundamentally wrong with, with Margaon's planning at this point? Actually, the main problem in Margaon faces, the two problems that I, I consider very serious, is garbage, hmm. of course, which has hmm. been there for so many years, you know, hmm. and nobody seems to be finding a solution. Now they are sending the wet garbage to Kakora right. and, uh, you know, all these problems. Hmm. But uh, the main problem that people are facing directly hmm. is the congestion. Hmm. You know, the traffic just doesn't flow, you see. Hmm. Because now, the uh, reason yeah. for this now hmm. is during the uh, late 80s and the early 90s, hmm. the planning process is increased FSI in city centers. This is completely reverse of the planning principles that are adopted in cities point. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Your towns did, and the roads did not have the capacity to take additional FSIs. For, uh, this is again in hindsight. Uh, uh, the policies should have been to have uh, downtown areas outside, outside the cities with higher FSIs, right. higher planning, mm -hmm. bigger, ro wider roads, better sewage facilities and things like that. So the problem is not created now. It has begun in the late 80s and 90s. Right, yeah. Yeah, in fact, abroad, mm. abroad, they even uh, subsidize transport mm. for people to go out of the city. Right. You know, and mm. uh, but in Margaon, what is happening now? The problem is not only if that was city transport. There's no other mobility to, to speak absolutely, of. Absolutely, absolutely. Everybody has to take vehicles. Mm. You see, even today I go by scooter mm. because I can't afford to take the car because I don't get parking space. Mm. You see, even if I get a parking somewhere, I have to walk a kilometer to, to reach my destination. Right. So, the entire, and another problem that Margaon faces is that buildings are still coming up. I can point out to you, I, I don't want to specify which buildings, mm -hmm. because then you might be uh, mentioning which uh, builders are, are involved. Mm. But there are two, three buildings which I have seen in Borda itself, mm. which have no parking space. Now, yeah. how do you expect, you expect people to keep parking on the roads as it is? But didn't the government say that we will not allow any construction of buildings unless the parking plan is made? Uh, what so happened to that promise? Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, but that is slowly changing. You will find that. Uh, buildings that do not have parking lots mm. are not saleable. No, mm. no, but uh, they, they, you see people are still <laughs> but they're still, But they are still building them. No, the still building building them. Stuff. <laughs> no, no but once no. they are built is enough. No, but, but that's one minute. There's, there's something that is happening over there. There's a trend that is happening. A lot of these buildings are not saleable and now become rental property, which are for people who are basically in, in a group of affordability that 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 can support those kinds yeah. of uh, this thing. Mm. They are slowly converting into urban slums. If you look at what is happening over there, in Panjim, for example, you have a lot of buildings which have t turned into this kind of uh, a situation over there. Entire building, either due to issues of, of your excess, absence of parking, or uh, absence of uh, proper title. This is what mm. is happening with them. And this is something that we have to be very careful with. If we just allow this to continue. So basically, uh, you know, the, uh, the health of a city is not related only to architectural and structural mm. planning. There is financial planning involved. Uh, the rent controls have to be proper. Your public transport has to be proper. Public markets have to be in place. Uh, satellite markets have to be placed. Mm. So the problem with this government is nobody wants to pay attention to details. Because it is, it is not considered a grand thing. You know, it doesn't mm. add uh, add to somebody's biodata. Right. 
So the moment that focus starts shifting back to details, that's a very important public point. Correct. No, this the this government is interested in real estate, real estate and real estate. No, no. See, don't, don't not, it let, it let's is, be very clear. Let's be very clear. Don't make real estate the whipping boy for all your problems. It is not. Hmm. The garbage problem is not because of the real estate. It is because of people's mentality. No, the parking problem is again not the builders' level. It is because of people's. You say like walking one kilometer parking. Why do you want to park just next to your shop? Why can't you okay, park I'll 50 meters you, away and walk? I'll you park in the first possible see, I'll place. I'll tell you why the real estate becomes a whipping boy. There is a, there yes. is a reason for it. And the, see, there is a perception that the ultimate beneficiary of any of these changes, laws, FSIs and so on and so forth, there is this feeling that the ultimate beneficiary is the construction lobby. The reason being that, you know, what are you, what are you looking at? At the end of the day, your perceptions come out of what you see in front of you. What you see in front of you are hills getting cut, roads getting widened, okay, buildings coming up, areas where, where there were fields, those fields are getting flooded and uh, fields are getting covered and big buildings are com com coming up. You, you look at Taligao for instance. So the reason is that the you, you also have to look into why the real estate lobby, rightly or wrongly, is getting branded for, the, for this because they feel that ultimately the beneficiary of faulty development or or corruption or whatever seems to be the real estate lobby. So that you cannot deny the the reason why this perception is happening. But but mm -hmm. leaving that aside, yeah. which is uh, his issues of yeah. uh, management of of the the, the city, mm. is also the fact that because of the presence of uh, what you would say uh, opportunities in real estate, mm. you know, there is no attention to anything else. Everything is about increasing FARs. Mm and creating this whole real estate hmm. uh, mass which which uh, everybody seems to be wanting and want even and, and if you ask me nilesh when you start increasing FSIs in some area hmm. you also look no, at no, other again, I, no no if, if you, you think you that need uh, to you need to look at <laughs> other things like like social infrastructure for example i made this point like, right in the beginning like, like i said that it, it was it. a mistake to increase FSIs in uh, the city centers like like is, education things no, like but now schools. let's come to the other side of it now whole, buildings whole that were constructed in, let us say in the late 60s and 70s hmm. are now coming down for redevelopment hmm. if they have to be uh, if they have to be viable you need some additional benefits to them Hmm. Again, at that point also we made a statement saying that, okay, you please put in guidelines. Who can get what? What should be a minimum size plot? Hmm. What should be the minimum access road? How much can you go? Hmm. What should be the, what should be the, uh, what do you say? Uh, what should be the benefits to the tenants, to the new owners? Right. So all these things have to be worked out. Again, put six points, seven points. But right. Nilesh, I have the a whole, house. Whole let's, let's put it this way. I have a house. My hmm. house is getting dilapidated. All right. Do I go to the government and tell them, okay, give me an extra FER so that I can rebuild it by selling that? No, FER. no, no. You don't do that. No, no. But no. see, you the, don't do the, that. Way to, the way to do that would have been, we will give you XI, you maintain this, don't change this structure. We will give you additional FSI, which you can uh, transfer, transfer somewhere, else. somewhere else. That's a different different thing. But you remember, well, while you're giving them additional FSI to transfer somewhere else, the government is also increasing FER everywhere else. So, so, so is, you're, you're, killing, right. you're killing an opportunity that can can work and you're not, not allowing it so to that, happen. That is where okay. the planning, planning is yeah, but and that's where talk, I'm saying. When you talk about FAR and FSI, what about the infrastructure that goes with it? If you say garbage is not handled properly, sewage has no way to go, so you increase. See FAR. now in Vasco, now in Vasco, the hmm. sewage system was laid in the in 80, 88 to 90. Hmm. So we don't have a problem with sewage now in Vasco hmm. because the the thing is well settled now we have got enough pumping stations Vasco also is undulating so we hmm. have got enough pumping stations collecting stations even then they fail they are hmm. incidents of them pumping out garbage into the Baina Bay hmm. things are there hmm. but by and large the planning principle planning has happened 40 years ago because so the whole process planning there was planning mm. but what has happened even in Panjim you have a sewage treatment plant which they say is capable of taking lots but is not sewage is finding its way into the creek and you're increasing garbage not only that and sewage, no pipes sewage, are connected to sewage is yeah. being brought yes. because places like Kalangut, mm. Kandoli, Porvori they don't have sewage treatment plants mm. they may have their septic tank which is not enough and with the increase in the coastal belt you have extra sewage so where do you take the sewage take it to Panjim and I was most shocked the big sewage from Kalangut yes to yes oh, yeah. yes 7000 oh, rupees for a tanker, tanker to take sewage from Kalangut to Panjim 7000 rupees See, there was, a, there, was a, yeah. there was a proposal uh, sometime back uh, 
to uh, sell grey water, no? Mm. To uh, because the sewage, the problem with uh, treating sewage uh, is mm. a lot of grey water is generated. Mm. In the cities abroad, they actually convert this water to potable. They increase. Yeah. Mm. Here yes. we are not even able correct. to correct no, it to grey water. Do it so this is all, these are all planning no, no, no. principles planning, that are not planning. wrong. No. What I'm saying, how can you increase FAR when you cannot take care of your garbage and your sewage and whatever that comes and your parking? What comes with it? Street parking. So you have water. Besides, I was really shocked. To read on your paper, 5th of uh, June was World Environment mm -hmm. Day. Mm -hmm. This report came out on the 6th of June, where the CM says that uh, we have to stop industrial effluent coming to Santhanese uh, sewage treatment plant. Mm -hmm. We didn't know this, that industrial effluent also is coming. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, Saligao waste management plant, which is for waste, you have sewage going there. What is happening in Goa? Mm. What is happening? Who is planning? Where are all our top people? All the ones who have been elected and promised us so much that we will do this development. This is development, not building. For them, construction and building is development, not this. We want okay. this development. Pritya, we, we need to uh, uh, wind down no? before we, uh, this last yeah. round. Let's. I just wanted to flag something very important. At the end of the day, we as citizens, all of us, we are paying our taxes. Yes. Okay. All of us honestly pay yes. taxes, at least <laughs> we do. Now, the point is when we pay our taxes, we are paying a house tax, we are paying a road tax, we are paying a commercial tax, we are paying so many other taxes. If we own a business, we have other taxes, yes. we are paying taxes for excise, shopkeepers are paying GST. the taxes. GST, of course. The, at the end of the day, this money that we pay needs to come back to us with some kind of benefits. The basic accountability, ultimately people have to, have to be the of beneficiaries of any kind of uh, development and secondly, if it is not happening and people's lives are getting completely, completely destroyed in the process, there needs to be some kind of an accountability. What can we do to ensure that this accountability mechanism works? Change the government. Hmm. You know, but, uh, but the I idea here is that you see any government, it just is almost seems as if the same people wear different uniforms and come back and do the same thing. So uh, maybe maybe civil mm. society has to be more vocal, whether mm. you call them aggressive or whatever. Mm. You have to be more vocal mm. and make all these people accountable. It will never happen. And not a department. Mm. What happens with the court? They'll fine a department. That's mm. our money only. Mm. You have to fine that person who's done the damage, not the department. Mm. And I think this will make a change when somebody feels that his pocket is suffering, mm. getting pinched. That is the time there will be a change in attitude. Mm. Otherwise, every time I've seen it's the department, find the town planning department, find the desire. They are not bothered, the rest of them, mm. because they are busy doing this. So unless you, and I think we have to make everyone accountable. Like Pal Chaudhary should be found wherever he is. He's taken the money and he's gone. He can't disappear into thin air. Mm. So he's got to be found. The next consultant who has been, who's done all these roads and sewage and whatever, damaged everything. Where is that uh, uh, consultant? Why are the, why is the chief minister do, not do asking know for his name? Yeah, correct. <laughs> I, I don't know. I know his name. I'm not mentioning, <laughs> but I'm not sure if he's the same consultant, but he's yeah. an architect. Yeah. So if you uh, call yourself a consultant and you're ready to do such work, mm. do it properly. Don't mm. put people into trouble. Zamari, There's uh, no accountability. Your, your, your last words on the subject, especially with regard to when we are when we are paying money for governance and ultimately we are we are we are we are, we are buyers of service we are buyers of governance so if we if we are the buyers why can't we be served the the thing is this accountability is not no longer there you mm. see i mean as patricia said mm. you know you find uh, you find a department where you don't find the 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 person who actually uh, has not done what he has right. supposed to do right you see but the courts don't even don't even find a department mm. you see and that's why people have to every now and then go to the courts mm. courts had to to tell the department see it's your fault that you have not taken this decision hmm. because you have to be accountable for either wrong actions hmm. or inaction right you see because you just remain silent hmm. and that's why people have to go to courts and spend so much of money and time time of the courts and time of the time and energy and money of the people hmm. see so accountability has to be assigned hmm. at some stage or other but how will you do that because the people if you want to extend uh, accountability it has to come from the top because it's the minister who has given right, an order. Right. We have seen this in so many places. Arvind, how do we get a return on our investment in terms of paying tax? So, I think accountability is primary, hmm. which means that 
you know, we we need to disband all this system of having uh, what you would say advisory committees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these advisory committees is just a way for somebody to get away with a responsibility by saying, "Oh no, but we the committee approved it." Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he has he has washes his hands of all responsibilities. So the advisory committee can be a committee advising the person, but ultimately that person who's a bureaucrat or a politician, whatever, mm -hmm. he has to be accountable. He has to be present from the beginning till the end of the project. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. Or if he is moving out of the project because he needs to be transferred, there has to be a complete handover where the next person who accepts the responsibility and accepts even the, the rights and liabilities of the actions of the mm -hmm. pre previous person. It right. has to be there. It has to do this thing. And I, I think that public activism should be encouraged. All right. Mm -hmm. If the courts can act faster, that would be much better. That mm -hmm. would be part of our checks and balances that we have in the system. Nilesh, the same question, how do we get a return on this whole investment that we make? So we just have to be more alert and mm. uh, you know, put your foot, uh, make, the, make suggestions in a proper and proper manner and in the right forums. Mm. No, I understand that. But what happens is that ultimately, don't you think that the failures of the administration and the powers that be who are supposed to act, implement, make laws, these when, when these failures happen, Nobody pays for these failures either in terms of the loss of power or otherwise. That is true. That is mm. like what you are saying is absolutely. But then uh, we have been facing this situation for the last. Can I say one last sure. Thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah? Mm, yeah. To me, what is also scary mm. is the government makes all its mess. But when it comes, they are very happy to appoint these huge advocates from the Supreme Court. Oh. At a tremendous uh, fees, fees yes, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and that's again our money. So, you know, when we are trying to solve a problem over here and telling the government, you can do this, they can cooperate with us and try and understand, listen mm -hmm. to what we have mm -hmm. got to do. Mm -hmm. Instead, they say, okay, we take up the challenge and they, they, they do this kind of expenditure from public money. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this mm -hmm. is happening again and again and again. It's happening through the town and country planning department and the, the, the there has to be an investigation of what's happening in the town and country planning department. Okay. And this is exactly because there is no accountability. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, we've come to the uh, end of a long and riveting discussion, but this is a subject that is ongoing and will go on till the cows come home and uh, and prolong thereafter. But the point is that uh, we seriously need to look at the mess in our in our principal cities, not just through the prism of uh, the lack of infrastructure or uh, the destruction of uh, infrastructure as it were, but in this overall context of how uh, planning is needed as far as your entire state is concerned because at the end of the day uh, faulty, faulty planning or lack of planning is ultimately leading not just to uh, very badly managed cities but very badly managed even, even panchayats and villages and, and so on and so forth and if this kind of planning goes completely faulty and awry way you don't see the difference between villages and cities and where, where plans all across are done in such a way that uh, that our, our cities, our urban areas and even our rural areas are coming into so much of conflict with the people who, who live there, then I think we need to kind of press the reset button and go completely back to the drawing board. Secondly, I think stakeholder engagement has a very important place in, in democracy and the stakeholder en engagement should not necessarily be only in the beginning of a project when you have a public hearing or a stakeholder en engagement, but I think uh, there has to be a, be a uh, a planning uh, planning process or a planning mechanism which involves stakeholders at different stages of the project uh, to, to review to give a feedback because otherwise what happens is stakeholder engagement becomes just a just a lip service towards getting a final clearance rather than being a part of a constructive exercise for actual actual uh, proper development coming to Panjim and Margao itself we are currently in a situation where it is difficult to walk difficult to drive difficult to park and at times difficult to even live and I think uh, so many monsoons have passed, deadlines have come and gone, neither Panjim nor Margao no, or no other city can, can afford to see another monsoon of such misery uh, coming on to our doorstep. We don't, don't want sewage to flow into our own homes, we don't want people to die in craters, we don't want shopkeepers to lose so much of business because their roads have, the roads in front of them are, are completely dug. So at the end of the day, let us kind of work, all work, work together in a spirit of companionship and camaraderie and professional give and take so that our uh, urban areas and planning as a whole uh, improve substantially. I thank all our panelists for their time and their views 
uh, which has made this discussion all the more worthwhile. Thank you so much.